Hey. Hey, how are you? Hold on, we'll get some water. I'm a little premature on this. Always gotta stay super hydrated. Yep. So the words flow out nice, so everything works well. The ura is mostly mostly covered by water. Our body is mostly water, composed of water on the inside of everything, the blood, the muscles, everything. All the organs, all the tissues. All right. Here we go. This will be a three-minute devotion. Three-minute devotion. It is titled, The Source of Temptation. It is from James 1.13. Here you go. Stormy is with me. All right. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away from, by their own evil desire and enticed. James 1, 13 through 14. This should be very interesting. Remember, I don't read these first. I just uh, do my devotion at night. The Bible teaches that temptation comes from basically three sources. From the devil... Adam and Eve sinned when they gave in to his temptation. Also, the devil tempted Jesus himself. And from the world and from our own evil fallen hearts. Many young Christians come into the faith believing that they'll no longer be tempted to sin in ways they used to. Some become discouraged when they find that the temptation to sin doesn't just go away. Temptation will always be a part of your life here on earth. It existed in the beginning for humanity and it still exists today. But God can't and won't tempt you to sin. On the other hand, the Bible promises God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Remember that one. That one's super important. Some people get that wrong or give you more than you can handle, right? God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Sometimes people get that mixed up with he won't give you anything harder than you can handle. But this is God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's always a way out. It's always choice. Everything is choice. Do I follow God? Do I honor God? Do I honor Jesus? Or do I do what the world wants me to do? What my flesh is telling me to do? And every time, if you just default to focusing on God and what would Jesus do, what would God do? And remember his death on the cross for you, the sacrifice. Um, remembering that. And remembering that and how I do is just be patient. A lot of times you don't got to make a decision right away. Just hold back. And wait, this cat's totally biting me. Just hold back and wait. Wait for God and the Holy Spirit to fill you. Yep. You don't have to make split-second decisions unless you are into, if you're a mercy room doctor, nurse, EMT, rescue, something like that, split-second decisions. A lot of times you can just chill. Chill and analyze the situation, but really praying about it and seeing what God says about it. Because in the Word of God, in the Word of God is all the truths and promises, and it is a roadmap for our life. Every answer to your question can pretty much be summed up in there. All right, all the basic stuff, all the basic stuff, and all we need is that good foundation, that good foundation grounded in the Word of God. So get that right. Everything else falls into place, just like those first two commandments, loving God with everything you got, and then loving people. And everything rests on those two commandments. So remember that. Pretty easy. So when tempted, there's always a way out. It's always choice. Just chill. Even when tempted to go off on somebody or be angry, uh, just respond out of love. Do opposite. The way I like to do it is me. I like to piss off the devil. The devil uh, sits back and he goes, Ah, he ain't gonna do that. You ain't gonna do that. You're nothing. You're not gonna be able to accomplish that or be successful. And I like to go, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, really? Yeah? I like a good challenge. So I go ahead and do it. 
do it the way that Jesus would do it and do it the way God would do it. And then, uh, yeah, glorifies God, but it pisses off the devil. And I like that. I don't mind that at all. Uh, but that'll keep coming up to where he'll, every time he'll say, you're not going to be able to do that and this, and just do what Jesus would do. And uh, focus on the cross. Focus on Christ. Right? Okay. Dear God, strengthen me by your spirit and help me to resist temptation. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So knowing the word of God. you got to know the word of God. Put it on the armor of God. Know the word of God. That's why we need to try to your best daily being in the word of God. Just something. If it's if it's Ephesians 1, 2, 3, 3 Ephesians 3, 14. What Paul, what God says about us. And uh, it's it's awesome. In Romans 10, 13. All of Romans 12, Romans 8, 28. Any of this. It's all there. So you remember that. Remember that, because that's what God said. And God created everything, and He created us, and He knew us before we were born. All right, so He knows everything you're going to do. He already has it planned out for you. So, uh, who better to ask than your Heavenly Father? And how we do that is through prayer. Through prayer, that is how we commune with Jesus Christ, how we commune with the Heavenly Father. Um, yeah, so He already knows what we want. But he wants us to come boldly through the throne. Just like a good father, he wants his children to ask him. So ask him. All right? Cool. All right. Sorry, Ray. A little late. I'm finished. You missed it. <laughs> you can always play it back. So, all right. Be in the Word of God. Be in prayer. Use your gifts and your talents. Fulfill your purpose on this earth. Uh, your destiny. And get into heaven with all your family members and go high five with grandma and grandpa and mom and dad and hopefully they were saved too and brother and sister and it's a big party in heaven where there is no sickness there is no death all your desires of your heart will be fulfilled and you'll be with the most awesome loving people ever but as i believe it as you do that here on earth his kingdom come his will be done here it becomes heaven on earth if you just stay focused god will say just stay focused on me it's the whole story of Jesus walking on water the boats going out in the sea and they see Jesus walking on water and he calls Peter out into the water and Peter's able to walk on the water but then for a split second he takes his eyes off Jesus and stops believing in him and having faith that he can walk on water and he goes under stay focused all right stay focused don't give him to temptation love y'all See you later. Be in the Word of God. Pray. Pray for me. Pray for my friends. Pray for my families and co-workers and for our community because it is awesome and we are blessed. All right. Cool. Love y'all. See ya. Ray Ray. This is a good guy.